This is the Mentoring Moments Podcast with Jensen Franklin and Marcus Meekum. Welcome to Mentoring Moments today. I'm Marcus Meekum here with Pastor Jensen Franklin, and we've got two of his team members, uh, Brian Smith that's over all the media here at Free Chapel and Jason Vernon who's over marketing and communications. And there's no question that as pastors and leaders, all the uh, pressures of social media and all the things that surround that, you know, giving, uh, whether it's your messages or what you're doing legs and how to do that appropriately, where the balance of all the self-promotion uh, versus just trying to get the message out, all that stuff we really want to dig into today. And uh, we're here with two of the best. These are the Jedis in these areas. And uh, I think that we can all learn something. I'm personally in a place where I'm trying to understand this stuff a, a lot more. And so um, so hopefully I can ask some questions uh, that you would ask because you're kind of still trying to understand some of these things as well. And so, yeah. Uh, so let's get into it a little bit. Tell us a little bit about what you do and, um, and, and your focus, and then I'll try to. Yeah. Uh, I've been with Pastor Franklin for 18 years. Um, I tell people when I first came to Free Chapel and came on staff, Facebook had launched the year before. And so <laughs> a lot has changed over the last 18 years, including We're dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, you know, it, uh, a lot has changed, um, uh, in media and communications and, uh, and opportunity. That's the way I look at it is, you know, a lot has changed in opportunity, but, uh, being with pastor Franklin, even, you know, there was only one campus when I came here and now there's multiple campuses. And then you see the largest campus blooming into the online campus and then everything that happened through the pandemic and the capability to continue to be able to minister to people being in the media um you know that was my call but being able to participate in a ministry that had that global vision and then being able to use media locally uh, to continue to minister to people when they were closing down churches i just you know that's god's blessing yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. I think <clears throat> that's a very good point that Brian just made. Um, just in a practical financial, uh, way to look at it to, to people who are, who are watching how important and critical, uh, online presence is. Um, I think for the first time, um, we came and maybe we surpassed it that our online audience outgave almost any church. I know that is happening now. It's, it's beginning to happen now that our online audience is the biggest giving, um, congregation that we have, which is pretty remarkable when you understand, you know, and, and we don't talk, talk a lot about giving. We don't say anything much about giving, the pandemic changed uh, a lot of that. We used to take offerings and stuff, and now we just, <clears throat> um, something happened and people started giving online and giving automatically and giving uh, with, you know, withdrawals just happening. They, they and, and then the online audience just started converting. It didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen instantly. But I'd really encourage uh, pastors to... Uh, to look at that because uh, we've had some miracle, real miracle, massive miracles that have come through our online audience. The, the biggest gifts that we have ever received in the history of this ministry, one-time gifts have come now through our online audience. And that's something that's really, really amazing. And so, you know, uh, we didn't start out with that in mind. We didn't think, but, um, and now, you know, we started offering a, a church membership online, you know, that you can, you can join the church, go through discipleship, go through next steps, go through, um, you know, uh, get in a small group um, online. Yeah. All of that, it's we, been an ongoing process and maybe we can talk some about that because uh, it doesn't happen overnight. But I'm going to tell you, I never in my wildest dreams, uh, you know, you got 3,000 seats behind me here in this room, in this auditorium. Yeah. Yeah. But 
when I look at our, you know, the, the audience that we preach to online, you just really have to look at like a, um, um, a, a, a Coliseum or something, you know, I mean, yeah. in, in real numbers, that's, yeah. that's what yeah. you're preaching to. And, uh, if you can ever, um, you know, begin to get that momentum going there, <clears throat> It's really something, and God is using it to expand the influence and outreach of the church. I really want you guys to talk about this because I'm I'm curious about it. What's the, you know, what's the balance? You know, can you really be, really a part of a church? Can Can you really be? Or it's a great question. You know, versus in person. You know, because for me, um, you know, I I just, of course, it's just so important for people to be in person and, um. And what's the balance, you know, how, you know, because I, I guess what we're saying is there are people that legitimately for one reason or another right. or maybe in a smaller <clears throat> rural area and they don't have a church that they feel, you know, a sense of of that they're a part of and the vision isn't there. It could be, you know, health issues and other things. And then there's just maybe some people that are just. This is a great conversation because it is a um, it is a. Um, paradigm shift that has to happen and these guys helped me make that paradigm shift because i almost saw it when it first started and only because of the pandemic only during the pandemic did it become my friend <laughs> <laughs> because i almost resented it yeah <clears throat> i i felt like i was competing against my online audience i really did i felt like it was hurting our church attendance yeah i felt like it was uh something and and I know that was wrong but I I'm just being honest as a pastor I I even I even at one time I think I told you to to um um can you block out can you block <laughs> out the areas wherever we have a church and a campus block them out and bless God if they don't want to come to church then they just miss it <laughs> and that was kind of my attitude uh at first and uh, boy, I got I, I got a revelation <laughs> when I finally figured out. You know, these are real people, yep. and they, uh, for whatever reason, um, I want them. I begin. We begin to see the the effect. I think we saw it way before, but we begin to see the effect massively during the pandemic of the potential of what God could do. And I, I think walk cool, us through some of that. Well, I, th I just think the cool thing was we were already doing broadcast. Pastor Franklin was already on TBN Daystar, right. multiple networks. And so when we hit the pandemic and they said, you can't show up, we still had a way to communicate the gospel. And it was interesting because people were shut in. Uh, the first year we saw more new people come online and more new names that we, you know, uh, new people that had never met us before because maybe they were in their own church mm -hmm. and now they were stuck at home and now they discovered, you know, us because we were there in media and then they discovered the online component and could see it live and actually, you know, I, again, it's, it is different being in, in the room, you know, in community with a group of people, but at least we could give them what we could give them. And I, and we tried to give them a great experience with worship and then with a message. And, um, like I said, it, it, it was good to be prepared for it because a lot of ministries weren't prepared. They were trying to play catch up on, you know, that's one thing Jason and his team were, uh, did a great job of is they were able to get us live and streaming, not only on the website, but on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. So we were all we had to do was make a quick transition, and then we were in multiple places with the gospel. Yeah. And we continue to do that today. Um, but I think being there, being prepared, and being ready, we already kind of had that broadcast component. But, um, you know, it did. It, it changed during the pandemic. It did. Yeah. But I will say this. Um, it always amazes me that during that period there would be somebody from Afghanistan or there would be somebody from London, or there would be somebody from China <clears throat> that was connecting with us. Um, and, and it just, it amazed me to see the global reach that you could go through YouTube. And, and again, because YouTube has some algorithms that allow languages to change and at least see closed captioning, they were getting the gospel into their language. Um, and That's so cool, huh? And, and so again, you're reaching people far outside the building. 
and they're in desperate need of the gospel. These are places where you can't actively preach the gospel. And, um, and so these people were being touched as well as the people here at home in the U S it it did, it did happen. It was like, as much as I don't like it, even some of the people I know that are the most committed, even locally, um, where we're at is they're very committed, but it's a real hybrid to them now. You know, sometimes it's, they just don't feel like fighting the crowd. Um, sometimes it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot for a little for them because they can sit in their, their homes and they've got the set up and, and, and they can engage it more. They can study more. They can talk with their spouse a bit more. Um, sometimes it's, you know, uh, health issues sometimes have a, they surface in the morning with people and, and they're always having to work through that stuff or, you know, there's a lot of, and, and before people, I think would have fought through that. Now I think, Hey, you know, it's not that they don't come in person, but not, as much. I mean, it's, it's yeah. the rhythms have changed. That's right. Not and, as consistently. Yeah. Most people, you know, before the pandemic that were committed to the church were coming at least three out of four weeks out of the Sunday. Now, I think that is, is really the deal. The word consistency and attendance is, uh, is, is, has been, I think if anybody, any pastor would be honest, there, there's a challenge there. There, there is a tendency to hit, miss hit miss you know and uh, hey we'll catch it online and who you know i don't know i don't know i don't know how i feel about that i mean i want i want my rooms you know like just running over all the time but but i also want to grow my audience and so you kind of have to embrace it i I tell you one of the greatest things that happened that that blessed me i loved it. it it took it brought it home but Jason's dad is how old, Jason? 72. 72 years old and precious man of God, a pastor. Hmm. Um, and um, and uh, where's he? Pa- in Lynchburg? Mm-hmm. Lynchburg, Virginia, pastor of uh, what church? Family Life Ministries. Family Life Ministries, a smaller church. They had no, um, no, no online presence when the pandemics. And he's an elder, you know, an elder pastor that just, will not, you know, just loves his people, loves his church. How many people attend? About a hundred. About a hundred people and kind of tell people, you know, uh, because he, he want, he needed social media to pastor his people. A lot of the, them elderly and, uh, and just some of those wonderful, I, I, that story just still blesses me. Yeah. It was the night before a Sunday morning and he called and he said, uh, we've got to do something tonight. And I said, what, what do you mean tonight? And he's not a digital person. Uh, he said, I've got to figure this out tonight. He said, I can't preach to my people. I'm going crazy. I've got to get the message out. And so we set him up on Facebook uh, Live. He started doing devotionals. And really, it, it encouraged him, but also all of the people of the church. So you would see them all commenting, all talking through that. And it, it took 15 minutes. And I think that's the key. A lot of people are afraid uh, literally, if a 72-year-old pastor can do that, everyone can do that. And uh, Marcus, I think you said the question in person or online, but since that pandemic, I think it has to be an and uh, for so many reasons. One of the biggest reasons is the front door of the church now is online. And so people rarely come and sit down for the first time in here. So They've true. already checked out the service and we can document that time and time again. Um, wow. One of the things we noticed in that, though, we were streaming, but until we had an online campus pastor at the pandemic, thousands of people started reaching out and everybody was like, what are we going to do with all of these people? And I have just watched people starting small groups. I've watched them giving. I've watched them uh, connecting. We've, You've seen them baptized almost every time we have a baptism. They're flying in because they want to yeah. be baptized in their home church. Yeah. Our online audience are, I mean, state after state after state. When they hear that we're doing the baptism service that I mentioned in one of the other podcasts that we do, like every six weeks, I take a Sunday morning preaching time and I let them tell their stories and baptisms and instead of preaching. And it's one of the greatest, it's just so always the altars, people are saved. It's, it's amazing. But, um, 
recently, just just in the last year, more and more are flying in who were watching online and got saved and want to get baptized, and they make it a special Sunday, and they fly in. And uh, it's just so neat to hear those mm-hmm. amazing stories, you know, and it's it's just continues to grow. We're also looking at watch parties in several states where eight to ten people are getting together. They'll watch the service. They give. They worship. And it's just really expanding out. And if you talk to people, um, for them, they say that they're, it's just they're not able to find a free chapel. Or a lot of people lived here and have moved out, and, and they don't want to just let go of their experience here. So they want to be part of online yeah. as well. It, make, it makes so much sense. I mean, it, re, it really does. You can fight where people are at. You can, you can argue with it. You know, you can say it's not good, it's not right. But on the flip side, if they do miss a, uh, they can't be at church, they're sick or kids are sick or just had a baby or like you said, they're, they're elderly or whatever, then they don't have to disconnect. They, they can find, you know, they're on vacation or whatever. Then you, you have people that are now, they're probably more engaged because when they miss, they don't miss. They, they, they have other ways of, of getting into it. Uh, two, two amazing stories. And I, I, I don't want people to misunderstand what I'm saying, but just, just to know how God has worked, uh, through online ministry to bless the church, even though you can, you can see it that way, or you can see it like what he's saying. And, and it's, it's truly an expansion of the ministry of people you would never reach if, if you're not reaching for them. And, um, a, a man, uh, uh, who has a business up north started watching us on YouTube and he flew in on his own plane, did not reach out to me or anything and set up in that section over there. One Sunday morning I was here. Uh, he went all the way from up north, flew down privately, set up there. He'd listened to a bunch of messages online, never came to me, never, sh- I, I shake hands and either at the door, or I'd stay down here after service as long as people want to, want to say hello or whatever. And never came up to me, left after sitting, watched it online for over a year. He said, I never really, I don't know why I started watching you. I just start, I heard one message and I started watching another and another. And he said, I'm not a real religious person. I don't, I don't, I'm not a preacher guy. That's how he's described it. Yeah. But it connected, and, and it was the right messages at the right time for my life. Young businessman uh, thir- in his 30s, late uh, middle, middle yeah. 30s, amazing, and super successful. So he calls the, <laughs> calls the ministry and says, um, uh, God's really dealt with me, and, I, and, and, I, and asked could I give him a call. And, and so I called him, and, and he said, uh, I, want, I want to start giving uh, I've sold my business, et cetera, and, I, and I'm going to give $100,000 a week for the next 52 weeks. And he's done that. He's done that every week, just like clockwork. That's, that's, that's the most amazing thing to me. And then I think of others that are on our own line that have done things that, that boggle my mind. I've never, some, I'd never met them. I didn't know them. I would have never met them if I'd only, uh, you know, even they're not like Christian TV kind of watchers and things like that. So, uh, it's another whole world. It's another whole world. And God used that to connect us. And, and these people have become precious, uh, partners in the kingdom. I mean, yeah. and they love this church. They fly in, and, you know, and, and it's not just the money side, but yeah. it's truly a, a kingdom connection that only God can do that, Absolutely. that enables you to do things that we could only dream of doing. But because of the online audience, these miracles are happening. And, and we've had one this year, another one that is just it's exceedingly abundantly above all I could have ever asked or imagined that a couple that, that were watching online, that's their only connection to the church is online. They started watching because 
uh, President Trump at the time tweeted out that he was going to watch online uh, on uh, what day was that? It was a big. Um, was that Easter? Weekend? Was it Easter or the 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 was it the first Sunday? the uh the one of the first sundays of the pandemic and he and he said i need inspiration and i'm going to watch pastor jensen franklin that sunday and when he did um i was on a flight from california and i landed and my phone blew up and it was just thousands of people who were saying you know some of them saying good some of them saying bad <laughs> things and others just saying and and the team had to uh hustle because we you know we we were warned that it was gonna that it would it had the potential to melt us down and mm -hmm. you can talk more about the tech Brian, that's side. probably more you could explain yeah, we had to prepare scalable servers because again the number of visits can shut down your website and we saw that over and over in those kind of scenarios so we ended up going with something where you reach maximum scales to the next one to the next one so it allowed us to to not lose any visitors that day but that day over a million people watched i mean that's real numbers over a million people watching and one of those couples was a couple that said the only reason we watched you was because he tweeted and we were curious and said, let's see what he would listen to. And now <laughs> they have blessed this ministry in, an, in, uh, in ways that I, it, it's mind boggling. And, you know, so God, God has a plan and we don't do it for that reason. But boy, if we'll follow his plan, it got, he, he wants to bless the church and enlarge our territory. A million percent. And those resources, you know, go to one thing and that's so you can yes. continue to do things to take care of of the the people that maybe can't do that and you know i was as you're talking you know i'm i'm thinking about all the people that are maybe even in their mind feeling this big because they're not jensen franklin and i want to say a couple things about that one is i have watched his patience i've watched how slow he goes i've watched how um, when other people just try to throw the gas on everything. And now where he's at, that's from 30 plus years of, of media. And, but it, the point is, is just knowing that there's a call to do everything you can to reach people and what can you do? Don't get caught up whether you can do all this or that story. My stories would be nothing like yours. Uh, yeah. But yet I can think of a couple that I met two weeks ago at our prayer, our Sunday night prayer meeting, and they drove in. They live about two hours away. Um, mm -hmm. They watch us online. Think about it. They that. devour that online. And uh, they, we, it was right around the time of our heart, end of the year heart for the house offering, and they gave us $30,000. That may not, it's tremendous. you know, for us, that it's was tremendous. That's amazing. Well, it's, but what's even better is then when they came to us, their, their granddaughter is in the hospital in Cincinnati. So our team was able to, mm. and it wasn't because of that resource. It was just that they came and they met us and said hi to us. And they told us about that. We didn't know what the, the gift would be when we, when we said, well, can we go see your family? Sure. Can we go see your daughter? Can we go check in on them and just let them know that we're praying for them? And so my point is, is I can hear those stories and think, well, what about me? But the point is, is just, you just got to keep stretching yourself, right. moving in that direction, doing what you can do to reach people. And, um, and then, you know, we got to look at people that are way up here because you can see the potential of it. The potential is, is out of this world. There, there is no that limit. We have done started small. It struggled. It, I wondered, was it a waste of time and money? I TV for years struggled. It was, uh, um, I've joked about, uh, the duct tape that, that we, the guys <laughs> carried around literally a roll of duct tape on their belt because our equipment was falling to pieces and we didn't have the money really to, 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 uh, to buy the cables and stuff that we needed. But God said, do it, keep doing it. Don't stop. Keep doing it. And one door would open and it would stretch me to the limit. It was, it would stretch. I would say how in the world, if we, I remember when TBN opened and, um, I was, it was both a blessing and a terror 
because uh, the you know there's, they're amazing. The TBN, the footprint is is there's nothing like it. Same with Daystar, they're amazing. And but all of that is extremely, extremely millions and millions of dollars, and and we didn't have it. I'm, I mean, we just didn't have, especially when we first started out. We didn't have. It took faith. It took raw faith, and it took seeding. And for years and years, the ministry seeded the TV ministry, you know. And we did good. It was always good little growth, you know, little yeah. little growth. Little, we we beat last year. Yeah, we beat last year. You know, praise God. And and I remember when we broke, you know, just just barely broke even. Well, that's it, innovating is doing what you can with doing the best you can with what you got, right? I can remember that little. Clo to me, it was a closet. You had this little room sure. where you had all the little screens. That's right. And then you had a little closet that yep. you would go and do the the before and after shoot. Yep. And you had some scrim, like some like I, I don't know, like it some stretchy some. material. And then you had these these can lights. And I can remember in my mind, like thinking to myself, like how rinky dink it was. You know, like I can remember that. That was 22 years ago. It was a long time ago. But you weren't thinking rinky dink. Right. You were just thinking, this is what we can do. This is the space we got. These are the cameras we got. And the content of who you are is 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 what really matters. So maybe you're out there and you don't have all the stuff that you see at Free Chapel. Well, the content, you know, don't just keep working on your messages. Keep working on your, your anointing. Keep working on your love for God, so your good. love for people, the vision. Your and excellence in you broadcast, do. you know, given it, you, 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 uh, you don't wait until you get there to, to really sharpen up, but you, you go at it like with all that you have, with everything that you can, with all the excellence. And if we, if you're at the duct tape level, you fix it up the best you can do it and you do it. And, 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 uh, if you plant, he's the, he's the root out of dry ground. <laughs> and if you plant Jesus into any ground, he's so self-existent. He doesn't need anything from the environment to draw life. Our job is to plant him. And if you plant him, he's the root out of dry ground. The tender plant, Isaiah said, that grew out of desert. Mm. out of no support, but, but you throw him and plant him. And when you start planting him and you know, it's a direction that God has given you and really, you know, go into all the world and preach the gospel was the, was the mandate. So I took it serious and I, I it's not that I'm the best preacher. I'm not, I'm not the most gifted. I'm not the most original. I'm not the most brilliant. I'm not the most qualified. I am, I am one of many. But the mentality has to be, um, if Jesus says throw out nets, don't throw out, if he says plural, don't throw out a singular net. But throw out nets and say, well, I'm a, I can fish too. And if he can do it for this one, that one, and the other one, he can do it for me. There, there are three other buildings in this city that before we got here, there's a smaller one down the road that's now... You preached in last night yeah. to our young adults yeah. and did a magnificent, magnificent message, which was amazing. And then, and then there's another building that is that you could literally put it in one section in the balcony. Uh, you could put that that building, pretty much. And uh, and so we didn't get here. We di we didn't get here overnight. And I re I really want to encourage you. God wouldn't give a a, a a flock of geese a desire to go south if there was not a south to go. <laughs> if God puts an innate call and desire in your heart and it's not selfish ambition, it's truly a vision. When God gives you a dream, you can't shake it. When God gives you a direction, you cannot just play it off. You try to, I've actually tried, I've actually tried to lose it. But when it, it is part of his call, you, you cannot ignore it and he will not let up until you do it. So if you know you're supposed to grow, you know you're supposed to reach, there's something in you that is just pushing you to reach more souls, then 
then by all means, in every way that you can, begin to plant Jesus. That's your job, planting. Get the seeds of the word out there. Plant it. How can I do that? I can do it by radio. I can do it by TV. I can do it online. I can do it on Twitter. I can do it on Instagram. I can do it in person. I can do it with this campus, with other campuses, and just start planting Jesus in dry ground mm. and and watch him grow. <laughs> yeah. Watch him astound and astonish you. And one day after 30 years of being faithful and 20 years and maybe 10 years of struggling. And then, and then I remember when we were building this auditorium, we were building this auditorium. It was, it was the skeleton and we had beams going across and the, there were no seats or anything. And the Lord, the Lord spoke to me. You remember that? Mm -hmm. And he said, get a camera and put it right there. And you stand out there and on a box and uh, write the vision and cast the vision and make it plain. We had no TV equipment. I was doing, this was a, a massive project. This building was a massive stretch for us. We did not have the millions that we needed to pay for it. And it was going to be a 30 year project potentially. And, and, and the Lord said, stand right there on nothing, no seats and no people. You had enough, we had enough people to fill maybe that much of the church. And these seats were going to be empty according to my numbers every Sunday. Okay. And the Lord said, stand right there and proclaim the vision for TV. And I did. Power of dream. The Huh? Power of a dream. The power of a dream. I preached that message. Praise God. The, mm. Man, that touches my heart. The power of a dream and how that God gives you a dream. He, you're never more like God than when you dream. That, that when God wants to change a community, he finds a dreamer. When God wants to reach a nation, he has to have a dreamer. When God wants to go into new nations and do new things, he has to have a dreamer. And I stood right there and I just began to proclaim the dream that God had given me, how that R.W. Schambach and all that whole story had, had kind of got us going, you know, a little bit. And to make a long story short, now we needed all new equipment. We needed HD equipment. It was going to be $3 million, something like that. And boom, God did it. I cannot explain it. We came in and all the equipment was paid for. It never happened before. It had never, it was always just bumping along. We'd have a good month and then we'd have a terrible summer and then we'd have <laughs> a, a awful uh, fall and then we'd have something that hit and it would, thank God we got called up and it was a struggle and, a, and, and, and then something happened. And, and the Lord said, no more duct tape. As I remember that word. He's, I was watching the guy in, in the studio wrapping tape and the Lord said, no more duct tape. I'm moving you out of duct tape level. <laughs> that's funny isn't it? i mean you know and and you say well god won't do that he you're 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 one of his favorites that's a joke i no, i'm not i'm I, but i do try real hard <laughs> and and you and you do too and i want you to know that god is for you god is for you God is for your ministry right god is for Absolutely. your business god is for your family and um, it and started got, and, and, right there. And you got to hear these things, you know. Yeah, there's I've faith never is seen the substance myself. of things yeah. hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And and before you're qualified to preach that, you have to live that. You have to. You you can't just proclaim it. At some point, you're going to have to really stand by faith and say, "I'm I'm I'm I've never been this way before, but here I go." And that's the fun. That's that's when you know you're leaning on God. When you it, without faith, it is impossible, which means faith is spelled R I S K. And when's the last time you took a risk for Jesus? If you fail, you fail. But at least I don't want to look back on my life and say, I wonder what would have happened if I'd have tried. And I know, like with with Twitter and Instagram, you've really been so instrumental in helping us grow. And it may sound to some like, well, that's just uh, stuff. Well, really, it's it's getting your message out there. 
and um, talk a little bit about that maybe. I think what's key is a lot of people focus on these platforms and forget about what they can do, how they can utilize them. And one of the trends we're seeing, Pastor, and you and I have talked some, is building a following is no longer enough. And so to where we would stream or where we would post, uh, what I want to encourage pastors to think about as we're moving into this next phase is having a huge following isn't going to do anything long term unless you're beginning to align those people, connect with those people, and and even form. That's with the online campus what we're doing. Um, you texted me the other day about a post that we wanted to send out, and you said get it to as many people as we can. Yeah. And I wrote back, well, Pastor, unfortunately that was rejected. You know, and there's a lot of censorship happening. A lot of people don't quite understand. There's a, a, a post about, a, um, I, I, I called out the 210 uh, Congress people who, who voted against the Born Alive uh, rescue bill, basically for a baby that uh, after it, an abortion has been attempted, it somehow survives and is born. And 210 Congress people said, let the baby die. They, they called it a non-entity. Let the non-entity sit in a pan and die. And, and, I, and I just felt led to say something about it real bold and, and say, what have we come to in this nation that, that we're silent, even preachers? I, I felt the call to challenge preachers and say, how can we be, how in the world, this is a human being, this is a baby. How in the world can we not See how clear scripturally, I don't care what woke culture or anybody else says, they're wrong and God's word is right. That's a baby. And that's a human being. That's an eternal soul. And um, and so, but like you said, it, it got, uh, we tried to boost it because mm -hmm. you only reach about what? 2% usually on a post. So and, let's uh, say you have 2,000 followers or 5,000 followers, you're only going to reach 2%. So you, boot, you tried to boost it in YouTube. And some of them said no. So, well, it'll get to a Amazing. point where you might have a million subscribers or a million followers, but what would prevent them from saying, you, you know, you're done, zero percent. And that's why it's just so important to begin forming them into a community because we don't own any of those followers. Uh, they're there, but but Twitter, Instagram, uh, the social media networks, that they're going to eventually, we've seen that. It used to be they would reach 10% and then down to 8 and then down to 5 and then down to 2. And now they're saying what can be posted and what's not. So something to keep in mind as we move forward into this next um, phase uh, of media. Jason, what I love, too, about what, what you um... – the world you, you like your father and my father pastored you know um basically the the uh demographic of most churches is what maybe two three hundred is that right something like that yeah. you know yeah. and so h how do we break this down because that when i love to talk to people running 500 300 200 100 how do we break this down and maybe and in some practical ways of what you guys would recommend. You, you are, you're amazing. Your knowledge of your world is amazing. And the experience that you have is people reach out to you from all over the world. I mean, they do. And, and some of the most notable ministries in the nation, just like we have gotten help from them to get where we are. We love to help others. That's a, it's a major part of our culture oh, you're is to help us. Huge help. Huge yeah, and, and yeah. we want to help any pastors that, and and we just want to say we open our world to you as much as we can. You know, we got to we got to keep things operating, but any way that we can help you, if you ever coming through and you need a tour or you want to try to, you know, I know we I know we do that kind of thing as much as we can. And uh, but what would you say to that pastor that's got limited, very limited budget and um but also knows that I need to up my game in this world. What, 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 is the, what are the wisest moves, maybe, some of them, that, that come to mind? But I would recommend to any young pastor, get to writing, get ready to be published, get into, into that world. It's very good. 
and get on YouTube. Whatever you do, do it with consistency. All right, let's go back to yeah. that first one for a minute. Uh, get into writing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's really good. What what are you what are you trying to like? Well, make? with with your ministry, My, when but, you wrote the first fasting book. All right, but before that, I wrote three little pamphlet books that were like um, ninety pages, maybe or sixty pages, little bitty pamphlet books. But uh, there again, it was just a small thing, and it helps you. It, you once you wade in. It's, you realize the challenges with it. it it's, it's, like, it's like, I can't do this. It's, it's stupid. I don't know how to do this. You can't find the people to help you do it. So you just start the process. And here's the beautiful thing is nowadays with technology, you can dictate. So you can open up your Android or your iPhone, whatever. You can, you can dictate a devotional. And if you did that every day, and posted that every day. And again, because of the technology, you can have a small little iPhone, a little ring light. I recommend getting your production value as, as best you can, but be consistent. Go ahead and do those YouTube videos, get a following, but then take those same videos, transcribe them, hmm. look at the themes, look where God's leading you in those themes. For for Pastor Franklin, I'm assuming you know that fasting was just something he couldn't get away from. That's right, and that became a New York Times bestseller. But it started again as something much smaller than what it was. That's right. But then all of a sudden, that is what attracted a new audience. New people came that were interested in fasting. Maybe they weren't interested in the spiritual side. They were interested in the you know New Year's I'm going to fast kind of thing. And all of a sudden, new people started coming to the ministry because he had written this book. And that's why I recommend any young pastor get used to whether you're dictating, whether you're, you know, just transcribing what you've said in a message, start to look at those themes, start to look at, at what God has put in your ministry. You know, Pastor Franklin and you, you have a uniqueness, uh, uh, a niche. Yeah. Um, uh, something that not everybody, when, when I d- started talking about fasting, there were, there were a few other voices out there and there were a lot of older ministers who had passed away, like, uh, Derek Prince, mm-hmm. people like that who had made, uh, great, um, uh, things happen with the teachings of fasting, but, um, but there, again, there were no you're... books like there were nobody talked about fasting much no, back was, now. Now it's a huge I, market. I could, well, that's that's I mean, anybody that that knows, I mean, that is you didn't just write a good book. But here's the point, you, because it, it because it wasn't a book. It was your life and right. that you've called the nation back to fasting. When, and, when and, I when I w- went to the church uh, be 18 years ago and we did a 21 day of fast. 21 day fast with you guys. I didn't know anybody else that did it. Matter of fact, it was extreme. It was like uh, over the top. I, I love it. I mean, it, and and now now we we're starting to see the benefits of it. We're starting to see what how important it is to give God the first part of your year at a minimum through prayer and fasting. It's the it's the very the thing. very thing that um, that you almost feel like is 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 not. Um, something that you would think would be the deal that would catch on uh maybe the very thing that god's raised your voice up with a unique fresh message that is now for the body of christ and so you know it's okay to be different not you're not trying to be different it's just it's just part of who you are and if you can like he said i love what you're saying brian is 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 begin to put in post begin to put in on what do you call it post and articles basically online and you never know god can take one of those uh thoughts and get it to the right person and somebody calls you and says hey let's do a book on that you know and uh but it is so true what he's saying is so true when that book came out it seemed like our whole ministry went to another so so the to put it to begin to start books and I try to do one a year. It's a challenge. I mean, it, it, it stresses me, you know, to a book a year. <laughs> but I like That's, what you're saying, too. Even those, like, little pamphlets. Yes. Even if you don't sell like, them, just yes. give them away to your church. Yes. And let them give them away to their friends. Let them, exactly. whatever. We, we, you know, we do that 
almost every year we'll put together a little devotional. It's a 21 day devotional. We give it to the church usually, you know, and then, so good. but we almost always point them to uh, how they can uh, get an email uh, where it's called daily bread with PM. And it's the same thing. Well, now that's tens of thousands of people that every day read that email. When they came to me with the idea, I bet, I bet they got it from one of you guys. Cause I was like, don't nobody want to get an email every day. It's like, I, <laughs> I put all that to clutter and junk. I don't got the time, but and, and I hear all the time, all the time, how people, their spiritual disciplines. And that's, I want to say that's a that's pastor's been disease. That's a pastor's disease that they think people think like they do. And your pastors and your senior You're pastors. You're on dangerous because, ground right now. Well, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll just say this. You you guys do think differently and God uses you differently, but there are people out there. What are you trying who, to say? Who, right? Well, I'm trying to say that. <laughs> a disease, a pastor. The, that a pastor, thinks, a, a pastor thinks his congregation thinks like he, he does. And the reality is there are people I, that are out there desperate for devotionals and desperate for this content. Well, it's really uh, discipling, isn't it? It, it, it is. It really is. Daily. Yeah. But they don't, but they seriously, uh, you know, it's like when I write, uh, I work on letters for Pastor Franklin. There are times when he goes, no, nah, I wouldn't do it this way. I wouldn't say it this way. And I'm saying, there's a lady that's going to read this letter and she would love it to be said this way. And she would love to take this content because she is desperate for it. And and again, Pastor Franklin's a bottom line guy, so sometimes the letters are short and sweet, and I'm 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 building out his message and 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 extending it because they want to be ministered to, and that's why I say publishing's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Publishing for a young pastor. Well, I love this though because um, especially young leaders need to understand that your gift will make room for you. The Scripture says your gift will make room for you. And you don't even know what your gifts are sometimes until you start moving in those directions. And, 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 and the practical side of it is, for me, it's not me writing all that stuff. It's, it's a team that God had to develop and give me and that I could trust. It took me a long time to even find letter writers that I would give a general theme and say, now you, here's here's the boundaries of how you do a letter. I'm not a I'm not a crazy asker. I'm not gonna tell you if you give me this and give me that. I'm you're gonna get a miracle and all that, and you're not gonna make me into that person. Mm. You know, so you have to own that side of it. But boy, if you can ever get people who can who can take a message and break it down and and real real simple and exactly like what he's saying and get it out to people so the practical step is to find begin to find those gifts they're in your church there's somebody I, I, i'm thinking back now to different people in the church who did it for a season and they took it another notch higher and then then god would send somebody and finally we ended up hiring somebody who who really was gifted in that area and they could take uh, they could take thoughts and, and, you know, I always get help with books. I'm not, I'm not, I have to sit down and I have a co-writer basically who I say, here's the outlines and here's thoughts and here's illustrations. And you, you I want to do this and I'll sit and talk and she's recording and we discuss things and get it going, get it going. AJ, um, what, um, I forgot her last name. Gregory, yes, A.J. Gregory has written a lot of books with me, and, and this is exactly how we do it because I'm not going to sit down and, and handwrite. I, I, I admire people who do that, and that's great, and if you can do that, great, do it. I don't, I don't have time to do that. I can't do that, but what I can do is I can take, I take a bunch of messages, you know, and, and put them all into a theme. And as you're going through, you just start laying out the chapters and laying out. But it doesn't even have to start that big. I, I like what you're saying is begin to develop your online team. And 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 you don't have to spend a fortune, just like what he said. He, he had his dad on. But, but you begin to believe in the gift that God's given you. Believe in the call that God's given you. Believe in the revelation that God has given you enough to, to begin to put it out there. Just wade out there and see where it takes you, and you're making progress. And, and the amazing thing, again, if you plant Jesus in dry ground, he's the root out of dry ground. 
he will. And then you'll stand back and be amazed like I am. Like, like I, if he could, that's why we were doing this. If he could do it for me, he could do it for anybody. It's a joke to me. It really is. It's a joke that, that all I, he knew I would plant Jesus. That's about yeah. it. That's yeah. about all I had going for me still to this day. Yeah. I will keep aggressively planning Jesus. So, and you know, we, we put, everybody's different, but if, if I have a week the way that I want to have it, I'll spend 30 hours, 20, 30 hours on a message. And, um, and then it just goes into a shoebox. That's right. Yeah, so well, good. I mean, that's just, a, it's just being a poor steward. Wow. You know, so you got, you got to figure good. out how, how we can, and that's where I've been incredibly, um, convicted recently is, is I'm always saying stuff like, I don't want to put the sermon clips out there like every other preacher on this and that. It feels so self-serving sometimes. And, um, mm. you know, you just, you got to get over that a little bit and you got to, you got to say, um, I put the time in, I put the work in, I put the effort in, I've, I've, so I've prayed good. it down. I prayed it through. I prayed it all around. I've done all that. I know how hard I work. I know. Cast your bread upon the waters. And in many days, Ecclesiastes 11 or 12, one of them, <laughs> cast your bread on the water. And in many days, it'll come back. You just, it, you got the bread is the word of God. And, cast it. And cast you can't, it out. You can't care about the results. Sometimes I'd, I'd get really yeah. freaked out because I'd be like, oh, I posted that sermon clip and it didn't get this many likes right. or that many. And everybody's going to see that and they're going to know, I, you know, I'm terrible. Why am I even doing this? And then my mind, I'm like, it's just better to not have to look at it. And, and I had to get even past that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't just put it out there. Sometimes it'll hit. Sometimes it won't. Uh, it, it was. I would say that it was people's ego that's having them put everything out. But it was actually my ego that was keeping me from it because mm. I didn't feel like I was measuring. Wow. Up. And really so good. you just kind of get humble yourself and say, I put the time in. It's what God told me. And I'm not putting it out there for a bunch of likes and for everybody else. Or I'm not putting it out for this. I'm putting it out because most importantly, you know, in that place, even if, if I'm my platform has three people, you know, or whatever it is, you know, well, is God first place in the least place? You know, not are you going to give your best if you have the Jensen Franklin platform, you know, but can you give your best when it's not maybe a, a huge platform? Why? Because God's first place, whether the platform is significant right. or major in your mind or other people's minds. And, and here's something I want to mention. Jason can speak directly to it, but you put it out there and you put it out there day one and 365 days later, that one person sees it and that's the day they need to see it and it's out there and it's ready for them. It's God's timing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's why you put it out there. You know, we, we talk about fasting and we say, well, you fast in January, but you may not see that breakthrough to November, December, Yeah, you know, whatever that is. But again, it's there. And like you said, you put in the time, put it out there and see what God will do with it. It, re it reminds me of the times where the ones that you think are not going to really do anything, like the power of short prayers. Yeah. You just got <laughs> up and gave a couple points about prayer, and then I text him. I'm like, it's over a million listens. He's like, are, are you kidding me? Really? And I was like, it's just catapulting. You just don't never know what God's going to do. To piggyback when you said uh, practically for, for a pastor how they could get going, my advice would be, and it seems very simple, but get acquainted with your youth department and, and really spend time with those teenagers and young people. <laughs> um, I'll never forget my first Sunday here. I, I'm from my dad's church, so we, our, Easter might have been 180. So I walked in on my first Sunday, and I'm, I'm looking around. I'm like, oh, my goodness, this is unbelievable. And, and right off the bat, I realized there's no way that I'm going to be able to build social media or anything else. I had an iPhone, you know, and uh, I remember going out in the hall and I saw this kid and his name was Sam. He had his uh, little phone and he, I looked at his Instagram. And so I came up to him that day. This is the first week I was here. And I said, hey, would you like to join the photography team? He said, yeah, I'll do that. He probably was 12 or 13. It's, it's not some huge experienced person. So we, he showed up that night and we sat down and he's like, where's the team? 
And I said, you're the team and you're the leader of the team. And, um, you know, we didn't have a photography team 10 years ago or right. a video team or social designers or uh, all, all of the departments that we have. It, it really started because of young people. And our team still is mainly young people. And they're experts at what they do. They know way more than I could ever know. So don't just overlook them, but spend time with so youth good. in in your church. And and Jason, when you for the glory of God, but when you came, we I, I don't know, do you remember how many followers and stuff like on Twitter and Instagram and what has happened? Let just watch. Well, I, when you get the focus on it. You were at about 60,000 on Twitter. Uh, we just passed a million, I think, last week. And again, going back to the team, it's they've killed it. And, and you have permitted us to grow as we grew. Uh, 100,000 on Facebook. I don't know, Brian, if you got them there, but, you know, they were at 100,000. That's, I believe, well over 2 million now. Um, Instagram, it was like 4,000. And we're going to hit a million, I'm believing, this year. We didn't have YouTube in either one and uh tiktok we just started last year that's grown over two hundred thousand. so i was doing the math i couldn't believe it i'm like we're nearing almost six million people if you add everything together i mean think about what god has done it's it's just amazing who i never would have thought it. i never would have thought it um it, it's been a fun journey well i love that story though because people think that you just you know you just throw money in we no, we didn't. It is it, that's exactly and and even in this room, if you in sitting in this room, um, you, you got people behind these cameras. Brian, speak to it. Te yeah. Just turn around and and yeah, and absolutely. Well, tell I mean, tell a few of these stories because you guys need to hear this and understand this. Well, we were. This asking, is how you build a church. We were asking the guys behind the cameras before the podcast. You know. Uh, Three specifically, you have Daniel, Courtney, and and Craig. They all grew up in Free Chapel, and we asked them when they got in media. And of course, Craig, think, how, how, Craig, how old were, were you? you? Ten, Ten years, years old. old. And then uh, Daniel, when did you in, start? And he got in the media department doing what, Craig? Running camera in Kid Pack. Kid Pack is our children's ministry, and he started running a camera. One of the most gifted young man that he's he's really got something special on him that we haven't yet quite well, completely uh, Craig edits maximized. the international broadcast every week yeah for kingdom connection okay well good <laughs> lord and and then you know of course Daniel joined us but Daniel grew up here Daniel Welburn started 12 years old again in kid pack started 12 years old we took this took the editing skills that he learned in our media ministry as a ch as a young kid and started his own extremely successful business uh, uh, making videos for weddings and and funerals and all kinds Corporate of stuff video and i want to i want to take a second and say we're going to try to do another podcast on a lot of times you're like well ha I, I don't have a great youth department how do I get a great youth pastor? I don't have a great worship person. How do I get that? You know, I don't have the media. Pe How do I get that? And we're going to bring Tracy in here. And um, and I believe also just in the way that I like to build church culture too, that any pastor can build anything they want from what they got. That's the old Tommy Barnett thing, right? The miracle is in, in the, the house. house. Don't get out there looking that you got to find. And, and sometimes you do. I'm not saying that, but for the most part, you can get most, if you're willing to put the time in and, and take the risk, those gifts are right there in your hand. What did you, how, what's that old message? Start where you are, you yep. are, Start. use with, what you have, do what you can. Or, yep. I might maybe mess yep. that up. No, but, but that that's it. And then my daughter, Courtney, sitting behind this camera. And, and, the, and this is one I'm most proud of because Courtney came on board um, and Courtney, um, she had an interest in what was going on. And, and Pastor Franklin had told me, said, you know, uh, put her in an area, check her out, and see what, you know, see where she goes. And of course she came in and immediately she kind of embraced all of it. And then I was able to put her in all of it. Uh, so much so that she left me for a brief period and actually went to another ministry and ran that very successfully. I was able to get her back. She is, <laughs> she is the future 
you know, I, I keep telling Daniel and her and all these guys, I said, you know, when I, when I started, there were three TV networks, ABC, NBC, CBS. Yeah. Fox was the outlier that came on board. So, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time, and I, I was sharing with them. I said, you know, you guys are the future. You bring the freshness. I said, now, I've been down the road a few times, and, and I said, you know, I can kind of predict you know, what may happen. And I have some experience, but these guys breathe so much life into what the media ministry is today. And like I, like I said at the beginning, Facebook just launched when, when I got here and to see the, all of the technology changes that are going on today and, and where media is going, there's so much opportunity out there. And, uh, but I'm so proud of Courtney and so uh, proud of the, where the, we're going. Absolutely. Really. Me too. Very brilliant. And, And the the whole concept, though, that I don't want as we come to close, but the whole concept of what I'm hearing that is so valuable and it's and it's and it's the Holy Spirit, too, is when you said, don't ignore that, you know, the teenager like like pastor there. You got it. You got this whole media department in your church. You've got it. You don't know it yet. And they may be 12 years old. But if you would just believe that God is not playing when he called you to preach, he was not playing when he called you to that church. And, uh, you know, to, to see that value in that kid, Sam, who, who went on to do amazing things and is in amazing is if it's the one I'm thinking it about, is. Sam. Yeah, it is. He left me too. He got bit so big time he left me, <laughs> and uh, but but he's still very involved, you know, in in helping us and and doing a lot of amazing amazing things. I mean, just incredible stuff. And uh, but he got trained right here. And then there's a kid that was in here a while ago that uh, is a sound technician. How, when did he start? Actually, he was doing the lighting and some of the tech on the screens. And again, another 11 year old that came through Kid Pack. <laughs> and today, you know, he's running our lights during our services, uh, has tremendous impact on our young adults and youth department, a leader. He, he's become a leader in, in technology. It's really hope giving, isn't it? You know, to realize that God know, knew that we would need every one of these gifts exactly where they're sitting right now. And so he said, if I can trust the vision to this ministry, I can raise up uh, a generation that can that can keep this thing going stronger. We hand the baton off when, when it's time, and they won't have the struggles that we had. They'll have different struggles. Uh, but but my, my dream is to hand off debt-free everything with more than all they would ever need to keep preaching the gospel like never before. Amen. I just think if they could understand, and even now where we're at, if they could see the young leaders that are doing what they're doing, they would be shocked because the people on our team are not experts. Uh, we've had like six come from Free Chapel College. They were here, got mentored a few years. Now they're on staff. You don't have to bring in, the, the, there really are no experts. Everything changes so fast. Mm. Just look for people who Hard. can change quick and, and know what to do, and, and they'll they'll make it happen. And and you're really. kind, and you're, you're a nice guy. Jason is a nice guy, but he's one of the most aggressive animals <laughs> about numbers. We I laugh because he, uh, Craig Rochelle's a dear friend, and, and I, I'm on his board of directors I go off this year after five years of serving has been a tremendous honor. But uh, when we started, he he got a spur in his saddle about uh, Craig Rochelle growing. And, and it was like, we got, we got, <laughs> it was so funny to watch the aggression in this team, you know, in a good way yeah. of saying, we like to win. We like to yeah. grow. We like to go. We got mm-hmm. to see in, we got to see enlarge our territory. Mm-hmm. And, and boy, that's how you go from, you know, a few thousand to a million in, in, in a few years is, is somebody's driving that engine. Somebody's yeah. saying, yeah. We, we can do this. We can do this. And, well, and and yeah. you say it's all numbers and numbers don't matter, but God thinks they, they matter. He, he put a book in the Bible called the book of numbers. So numbers matter for a reason because numbers represent people. 
So it's it's almost every chapter in the book of Acts that how they right. increase how this I mean it's Gave the over and over three thousand five thousand and, 5, and every number has to be paid attention to mm. online campus people who are in small groups and our, wow. our online pastor does amazing at this uh, first time guest every week do we have more online first time guests or less why did pastor not talk to the online campus uh, how was the opening how was the close. Uh, online first-time givers, are we reaching out to them? Online prayer team, have people requested prayer and not been called? E everything matters. It's just like a normal campus because in my eyes, it is a, a normal campus. And so if you're just getting started, you may have two online guests. But guess what? You have all their information. So Go great. get them, take them, and grow your church. Amen. You're being faithful. God never told you to be super successful, and he never called you to be a mega church. But He did. you will be judged according to your faithfulness. He said we are mandated to be faithful, and to whom uh, a little is given, a little will be required, but don't bury the talent. And I, and I want, I really, this. I, I feel so strong about this that, what what everybody has a, t a tendency to do is say, oh well, that's that's him, because there's only a few of you in the world, really. And what I'm saying is, and the reason we're doing this podcast, this is the point, is for 18. Well, it's more than 18 years, but since I've been pastoring for 18 years, how many times I'd be on the phone with you, right? And I didn't want to hear this kind of stuff because I felt so small. And I was like, yeah, that's you. That's you. That's your who. You. And I, you're picking up the phone. And I did. I was thankful for that. But my point was, is it was almost discouraging sometimes because of how, you know, and that's why we're doing this. There's a, there's a few of him, but there's a bunch of us. And he kept pushing me. He kept pushing me. So any uh, effectiveness or, or success, I don't think is the right word, but just... That, that we've seen is because he wouldn't let me buy into that lie that he kept saying, no, you got to get a dream. You don't have to do what I do. You don't have to be who I am. You don't have to, but, but you you are going to have to challenge that in you. And anytime I've gotten apathetic, it's because I've allowed myself to fall into those areas. I was comfortable and I knew how to do it and I knew where I was good or I knew where I was strong. And it was him that kept pushing me and, um, and that's hopefully what we're doing for you right now is not and trying to say be this or be exhibit that. Exhibit A of what we're talking about is is seven hills and, and what God's doing there. And it, it is absolutely astounding what the Holy Spirit is doing in that church. I mean, it, and, and in your in and in your in your youth group, all everything just exploding, just exploding and reaching no hype, no, no crazy, just hard hard work and excellence and and getting out there and getting the message out there creative being creative same principles that we did to get the attention of the community you know by little by little you taking the ground you're possessing the ground and and but it's been supernatural and it's been so rewarding and that's why we're doing this that's why we're doing this podcast is you talking about two guys that that I saw in him myself. And, and that's why I felt, you know, to push you. I saw myself and I see it in those who are watching us right now. And no, you may not be called to, to, to do, but, but you certainly God is for increase and growth. Yeah. I mean, certainly he is. And, and, and there's something I believe in us that has to have that to feel fulfilled some of it uh, you can't have it all the time but i need some wins i need it well yeah. and there, that's god that's god right i mean that's god in us saying i want you to win absolutely and you know it, that's the whole point is when you get the win if you're getting the win saying oh look at my win yeah but if you're getting the win to say okay i i a lot of times with this stuff, you're dying Sorry. behind the scenes. I mean, oh. you are dying a thousand deaths behind the sure. scenes. And when you get up there, there's no sense of ego because you know yeah. that that outside of God somehow doing anything. But then you get up there and it you truly know he made it live. I, I served God by putting everything I could into it. 
but he breathed on it. And then you get there. And once again, you keep finding another way to go back into an area where, um, you don't know anything. You, you, you're the chance of failure is high. <laughs> you know, the chance of not making it is like, you're talking about writing a book and I'm sitting here putting all this stuff down. Cause I, I know, I know what I'm supposed to do. And I've just been afraid cause I don't want to fail. I don't want to, I don't want to fall short. I don't want to do it and, and nobody read it. And, and then I, I you know, I'm also it really is, questioning my judgments. It, I judge other guys when I'm like, why are they writing a book? You know, right. like, what's the point? You know, right. it's like, they're getting ahead of themselves in my mind. And then I'm like, well, it's my own ego. At least they're believing in themselves. At least they're going for it. You know, and, and, and hearing you guys talk is it's, and that's what we want to happen. The dream should beget dreams. You know, the dreamer should that's right. be inspired. And that's what happens when I get around you or these guys is they, okay, you're right. I sell myself short too much. I, I give all myself the excuses on, well, there's so many other people. I don't want to be an echo. Uh, what's, what's the point? I mean, really, what's the point? Let me just build my church. That's my bean patch, as you would say. I'm just going to be faithful there. But be careful with that, that you still need to get some areas where you're like, oh, uh, uh, I, I probably am going to fail here, you know, and I've got some of those right now. You know, I'm like, I, I'm probably not going to do it, but I'm okay with it because I'm not going into it to succeed. I'm going into it to say, God, if you want to do it again, I was, I was the underdog every other time too. That's right. So, you know, if you want to do it again, I'll give it back to you. I, I will. I'll give it back to you and, and I'll treat people right along the way. Like you've taught me, I'll be kind along the way. I won't get big in my head along the way, but I'll honor you with it. And, and it's just so the joy, I hope they the joy of looking it. back to and seeing the different seasons and seeing to and being so incredibly appreciative of realizing I could not have done it without Brian Smith, without Jason Vernon, without these amazing people that are in this room and uh, in, in a thousand thousands more actually that make it happen. Um, there's no, and to know that God had such a magnificent plan for his life in his life, that that's the stuff that we don't, we don't, we, we're not that, we don't have the sense to put all that together, but God does. Yeah. And all he needs is simple obedience and dream, dream again. And I think don't we should be up. doing that together, right? I felt like quitting so many times. Yeah. I felt like giving up. I felt like quitting TV so many times, so many times. Now that's the biggest revenue thing, you know, in the ministry. But I felt like quitting. I felt like quitting so many times. Just the all everything you just said. I'm not. I'm not. Who do I think I am? You know, these guys are really amazing. Not and they just. And I, why don't, why, why isn't everything not lining up for me? And it didn't for years and years. It didn't. It was a struggle all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's a grace. It really is a grace. And, but I love, I love that you're starting, uh, TBN called you and, and, uh, and other networks, Daystar has, has reached out. And, but TBN particularly, which is a major market, a major, uh, and and you can't kick those doors in. You can't just do that. The money doesn't make that happen. The, Matt called you to the you know, and and you, he's going to be starting on TVN in in a few weeks. And it's just so exciting to me to see that that God, you know, if I inspire that to God be the glory, I'll cast my crown. But that's that brings me more joy than me doing it now. It really does. It's kind of weird. It's like I I love what God's doing, but it's kind of like what you're saying and what you're saying then finding another generation and raising them up and, and then saying, such as I have, give I unto you, get up and do a miracle for your generation. Cause I, you know, he didn't call usually an older generation to reach a younger generation. He, he can't, you can span the generations. Yeah. And, and that's what it says, David, served his generation, his generation. fell asleep. There's only one generation you can serve. So right? somebody's got to be a dreamer in your generation. Yeah, what's that scripture, old men dream dreams? 
Old men dream dreams, but young men see visions, and dreams are bedded in the past. You know, you would start talking to an old person. I remember when the Holy Spirit did this. Wow, and, wow. and that and it's always about what they've seen. And that's and that's fine. That's beautiful. Because there's a faith that I've seen him do it before. He can do it again. But young men see visions, and vision is about the future. They understand a different concept. And rarely is it, you know, you can reinvent yourself. That's one thing that I have done. I mean, I if you'd have told me I'd be preaching in jeans and stuff and, and all that. But, you know, I do things purposely because my wife likes me to look right. But beyond that, um, I do it because I really want to reach people in a, and, and I want to, I want my ministry to span generations. I want to stay relevant. I want to stay, uh, up to date. I want, I love to talk to young people, surround myself with, with young people. Uh, the older I get, the more I want young people around me just because Absolutely. you're learning, you're, 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 you're noticing, you're, some of it aggravates me. Some of it ticks me off sometimes, and I find myself being an old cranky man sometimes. You know that that why why are, that's that's a, no. They're just like I was, just like I was when I was coming up, and the older guys. It's just how it is. Yeah. So, I would say to anyone like a forty, fifty, sixty year old pastor, it's not too late to jump into this thing of of taking it serious and uh like your dad 72 years old and started his online ministry it was the most precious thing i love that it was the most precious thing and he was so he'd call jason and be so excited that to be uh, crying yeah and saying the people are they're they're te- they're uh commenting and we're we started this and started that online yeah love it and you know he he actually retired this year and raised up a young pastor that he had spent a lot of years building up and the young pastor has obviously a further vision so they're online they they've redid the state he calls me and they'll say well they redid the stage and all that i was like yeah dad but remember <laughs> now he's the young guy coming up and he was like well it's reaching more people and so there you go it's just beautiful. sacred cows make good hamburgers that's it that's it <laughs> We'll the pan- piano one inch at a time. Right? Would know. you pray for just the pastors that um, absolutely and and the people that just the dream, the dream? Lord, I just pray right now for pastors that feel like they're all alone and uh, they need a media minded person around them right now. They need a um, online Instagram, Twitter kind of person right now, and that person might be the teenager in their own family, the son, the daughter that they. Um, or or a kid in the youth group, or uh, Lord, I just pray that you would open our minds, that you would open our hearts, that you would give us your eyes and let us see what is in the house and just take baby steps that, that will be led of you into uh, greater influence, greater uh, ability to Jesus. preach the gospel, that we would plant Jesus in dry ground, and just believe that if we will plant the seeds, that you can bring forth greatness for your glory and your praise. And, praise and we ask it all in the name of Jesus. I stir up the dream in every person Jesus. listening to me. While we talk, you've got glimpses of potential um, miracles in your in in your ministry that could happen, outreaches that could happen. And may they not die on the vine, but may May that dream just begin to pursue it. Just begin to pursue it. In the name of Jesus, it will prosper if you'll pursue it. And we praise you for it. We give you the Lord of the harvest and the Lord of the increase, all the glory. But we will Jesus. try our best to do more than we've ever done this year for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, before we end our time together, I want to just remind you about this Sunday night. Uh, first Sunday night of every month, the pastor's uh, prayer opportunity is just simply a way for you to come and join us with prayer in prayer if you would like. And then the next day, we'll find some different things to do just to sharpen one another. There's no obligation. There's no need here. If you need to know people are pulling for you, that's that's it. We'll pull in prayer. We'll we'll find ways to maybe even maybe you can even bring some of your 
young people with you and we'll set them down with some young people here and figure out how to get your your this going or that going the point is it's just uh look at how you can uh come and hang out with us if you'd like and of course share this um, hit subscribe uh, if this has spoken to you stirred you help you dream a little bit bigger there's other people that could use this as well and so we'll see you next time Thank you for joining us for Mentoring Moments with Jensen Franklin and Marcus Meekum. Leave a comment to join the conversation. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.